What's shaking, Navigation Nation? Welcome to this week's video update. Today is Thursday, April 18th. Markets are closed tomorrow for Friday, so I wanted to record this to get this out to you today. This is your video recap of all the alerts and all the positions exclusively for you, our pro members. Before we jump into the alerts, let's take a look in the community and see who got caught being hot this week. Every week, we like to recognize one member of our community for helping other traders. And this week goes to Barry Goldblatt. Congrats, Barry. You got caught being hot. Thanks for all your contributions. And we'll send you a private link to get some trade hacker swag. So congrats, Barry. Keep up the good work. Barry's uh, been in the community for less than a month, but it's been posting a lot of good perspective and trade ideas and things uh, along the uh, lines of what he's doing. So great asset to the community, and we appreciate all your engagement, Barry. Keep it up. All right, let's jump over to the alerts and start with the first trade was a closing trade in Johnson & Johnson. So we had a pre-earnings long straddle on in J&J. &J. Uh, this one was a little bit frustrating because we had some a decent amount of profit right off the bat, but not quite enough to take it off. And then it turned around and just kind of waffled around and stayed in the range instead of breaking out, which is what we needed in this uh, pre-earnings long straddle. So we took a loss on that one. Next trade was a closing trade in Netflix. So we had a pre-earnings long strangle, very similar to the pre-earnings long straddle, just widened the strikes out a little bit. We never got an implied volatility expansion in Netflix leading up to earnings or a decent enough price movement to make this one happen. So we took a loss on that one as well. Let's take a look at Netflix real quick uh, because the implied volatility was really interesting going in. I mean, look how flatlined and it actually contracted going into the earnings announcement. We never got that pop higher. And so we were never, never able to give, get an opportunity to book a profit on this one and, you know, go into earnings, IV percentile and IV rank were under 50, which is, uh, you know, not really normal. So, but that just happens sometimes and you're just playing the, playing the probabilities and this time it did not work out. So took a loss on Netflix. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in SPY. So we had our short call vertical in SPY. And uh, we only had two days left to expiration. So we kind of held these a little bit longer than normal just because we were hoping we might by chance, could we please get a little bit of a downside movement in the markets? Uh, but we had we were getting down to, to crunch time towards expiration. So we went ahead and rolled this out to May, adjusted our strikes accordingly, and that kept the short delta exposure in our portfolio. So let's take a look at SPY. And you can see after the roll, we've price has gone down a little bit. So we've made a little bit of money since we've done the roll, uh, but kept that on extended duration and uh, allowed us to keep that short delta exposure in our overall portfolio. Speaking of short delta, we are right at about five to one. So we're right on the upper end of our range of where we like to be. Uh, we were actually above that at the end of last week. We we're about six to one. So we've kind of tweaked and massaged that down a little bit. Uh, so we're back into range. We'd like to get a little bit less, but you know, I'm hoping that we get a little downside in the market that kind of takes care of that for us instead of us having to put on some long delta or cut loose any more short delta. Uh, we did cut loose some on the DIA, which I'll talk about. We had an, a, an assignment there. First time ever in our alerts portfolio that we've gotten assigned. Uh, so I'll talk about that here in a minute. The other thing I want to mention before we move on here is if, if you noticed on my chart, there's a, there's a new kind of indicator plotted here. And this is something that I used to use quite a bit and then I kind of forgot about it, but I think this might be helpful. And I've, I've created another video that we'll be po uh, posting on our blog, uh, just another couple minute video to kind of go over this, but I'll go ahead and share it with you all, our pro members here as well. And essentially what this is doing is just plotting the expected move of the symbol that you're looking at. So we're looking at SPY. And so this gives us that one standard deviation move uh, that we that we like to play in to help us get an idea of the range of that specific symbol. And this is based on the options pricing and and the of that underlying security. Uh, and so 
it's kind of like if you go to the analyze tab, you've got this shaded gray area, which represents one standard deviation move or about a little over 68% probability that price will stay in this range of the shaded gray area between now and expiration. In this case, you know, today's April 18th, uh, May 18th is the expiration date. And so you can see that that is the kind of the, the range that price should move around in. Uh, between now and expiration. Well, this is doing the exact same thing. It's just giving it to you on your chart on a little bit different visual. So if you if you keep scrolling, it gives you the, the 30 day probability, the 60 day, the 120 day and, and so forth. And so anyway, just a, a good little visual tool. If you want to check this out, if you want to put it on your chart, just go to studies. This is a built in indicator inside toss edit studies. And then it's called the probability of expiring cone. So you have your list over here. You can just start typing probability and it'll pop up there. Probability of expiring cone. Just move that over to your price level and that'll show up on your chart. So hopefully that helps some of you just from a, a quick snapshot visual perspective. All right, moving on. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in IYR. So we closed out the call vertical side in IYR. Uh, we had originally closed the put vertical side after price back on uh, April 5th after price breached our upside break even. And then price came down really nicely, giving us a chance to take that piece off. Booked around 40% of max profit on that a April iron condor overall. And then we're still holding on to the May one, which I'll get to in a second because we had another alert on IYR, so I'll, I'll jump to that first. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in wheat. So we added an iron condor in wheat in the June cycle with 37 days to expiration. We skewed this one a little bit just because we had a lot of room to the upside on our other one, and so we skewed this so we had a little bit more room to the downside. So I'll, let's, go to the, let's go to the platform, I'll show you what I mean. So here is now let's uncheck these boxes here so we can get a good look at each of these. Uh, let's see, I did these with different contracts to keep them straight. So let's first look at the one with four contracts. This is the one we just put on. You can see prices right here. So I gave it, I skewed this a little bit to give us a little bit more room to the downside. As you can see, we have less room if the, if the price moves higher, but we've got more room if it moves down. And the reason I did that is just because on our other one, we've got a lot of room to the upside. In fact, price had at one point come through and breached our break even here. We did not close out the untested side. We just give it a little bit more time and price has come all the way back into range today. So you can see we got a lot of room on the upside on this one, a lot of room on the downside on the other one, giving us a nice wide break even for price to bounce around in in wheat. So that's where we are there, just waiting for some more time to pass. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in IYR. So this is where we added that new iron condor. We did this in the June cycle with 65 days to expiration. You know, we're at that kind of point with our expiration cycles. One was at uh, 30 days to expiration. One was at 65. We opted to go with the one with a little bit more duration. Uh, targeting 20 to 30 percent on this because it's not our traditional 20 delta iron condor. It's a little bit tighter because IYR is a lower price symbol. So let's take a look at IYR. IYR is the real estate ETF. Uh, this is both positions plotted, but let's look at just the May one first. You can see price is hanging out kind of in the lower end of the range. Let me spread this out a little bit so you can see it better. So price is hanging out right here, so we could use a little up movement to uh, to benefit that. And then the one we added here was this one here. So uh, still pretty centered, uh, just waiting for some more time to pass there. We added this one on because A, price was hanging out in the lower end of the range of the other one, and implied volatility popped up uh, higher yesterday, you know, to above. It's at 61 now. It's come down a little bit, but it popped up. Uh, to almost to that 80, 80 range. So that's why we wanted to sell some premium and try to take advantage of that uh, expansion in implied volatility. Next trade is opening trade in XLV. And this is the uh, healthcare ETF. Had some news. Uh, United Healthcare announced earnings the other day and their, their uh, CEO came out and started talking about how some of the uh, candidates are looking to disrupt the healthcare industry, which could really hurt uh, 
some of these uh, healthcare companies going forward. Uh, you know, healthcare, Aetna, Cigna, all the big, all the big carriers had some volatility going on. And we looked at, you know, doing in a play in one of those individual stocks, but the overall ETF had some volatility too. So we would prefer to use the ETF over an individual stock. And so that's what we did. IV percentile jumped up to 69 at that point. I think it's gone even higher since. If you look at XLV, uh, yeah, it went up higher and, and now it's contracted down to about 76. But uh, this has gone, so we're pretty pretty close to where we put it on. It's not quite as centered, but no profit or loss at this point. So just waiting. Uh, by the way, we're gonna we're redoing our watch lists a little bit. I had a couple questions from members saying, "Hey, you know, XLV is not on the Iron Condor watch list. So why are you doing Iron Condors on that symbol?" And same with IYR. You know, we have those on our short strangle list, but we don't have them on our Iron Condor watch list. And the reason we didn't is because. If you try to put on a traditional 20 delta iron condor, you just don't collect enough credit to make it worthwhile. So we, we kind of had that list just specific to higher price symbols where you put it on at that 20 delta. But in this case, with XLV and IYR, putting on a strangle, it's kind of in that weird area. It's, it's priced in the 80s, but both of them are right at 85. So if you try to put on a short strangle, it just uses too much buying power. And if you try to do a traditional iron condor, you don't collect enough credit. So what we've done here is to kind of modify is we've, we, we squeeze our short strikes in closer to price. So we collect enough credit to make it worthwhile, but we still buy the wings to, uh, to define that risk. And so we're going to, uh, and I under, I understand our members confusion because they're saying, Hey, this wasn't on the iron condor watch list. And all of a sudden you're making trades on it. What's up? Well, that that's kind of the explanation. And so we're going to, we're going to redo that and just, we're going to add a lot of these lower priced symbols to that iron condor list, including, you know, like EWW, EWZ, EEM, you know, these are in their forties, but you can still do really tight iron condors in there. Uh, especially with, uh, especially if you have a lower commission rate, you know, tasty works, zero commissions to close. It's not as big of a deal anymore. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure I clarified that for anybody else who had that same question. Uh, we'll be redoing our watch list and we'll let you know once that's, uh, once that's redone. Moving on, the next trade, closing adjusting trade in DIA. Okay, so before the market opened, I got an email from uh, my broker, Thinkorswim, TD Ameritrade, as well as uh, some of you also did. And what happened is we got, we got assigned. I mean, we, we came down, we held this all the way to expiration day. So you got to expect that you're, you're going to get assigned on some of those. And this was pretty deep in the money. So we did, we got assigned, but, uh, a, this is the first assignment we've had in two years in our alerts portfolio. So, and we usually don't hold them this close to expiration, but we're just, you know, again, we were basically at max loss on that short call vertical spread. So there was no hurry to get out of it or roll or anything like that. And this is one, you know, we had, we had this one, we had NVIDIA, we had IYR. IYR came back, we booked a profit on that one. NVIDIA and DIA, we were still just kind of holding to see if we could get some down movement before we did anything. So we were going to close one of those to cut loose a little bit of that short delta anyway. So we got assigned on DIA, so that just made the choice for us. And so what happens is then we are left with our... Uh, we're left, we get assigned on that short call. So that gave us 300 short shares of DIA. So all we did was we bought those back. So we closed that out. And then on, and then it also left us with three long calls. Okay. So we closed that out. And so then we're, we're out of that trade. So yeah, a lot of people get a little freaked out about getting assigned and it's really not that big of a deal. Even if, even if you getting assigned, creates a, a situation in your account where the buying power of that position exceeds your, the buying power in your account, your broker still gives you a day or two to get out of that. So it's not that big of a deal. Your risk profile in that trade really doesn't change much, but you know, unless you're wanting 300 short shares of DIA, you're just going to close it out, which is exactly what we did. We're not interested in, in carrying 300 short shares of DIA, we had it on as a short call vertical. And so we just closed that out. Now we're still holding the full iron condor in DIA. So let's take a look at that. It's hanging out near the upper end of its range. 
And so if it goes too much higher, we're going to we're going to need to adjust this one by closing out the put vertical side. If we take a look at that side, it's got very little value left in it. So again, if it moves much higher at all, we'll be looking to close that out. And then with implied volatility as low as it is, we would not look to add another piece to this at this point. We will just play it as it is. Uh, but we're in May, so we got plenty of time left in May, 29 days to expiration. So no, uh, no need to hurry and do anything on that one. But if price does move higher, we will close out the untested side. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in NVIDIA. So this was the other one I mentioned. We had a short call vertical that was out of range. And so this one we did go ahead and roll. And in this case, we rolled from April, which again, today was the last trading day, so zero days to expiration. Instead of rolling this out to May with 29, we just leapfrogged May and went out to June with 64 days to expiration, give us a little bit more duration on that trade. We adjusted the strikes down a little bit. And so let's take a look at our NVIDIA trade. Uh, NVIDIA, it's gone down a little bit since our roll. Price has gone down a little bit since our roll, so we've, we've gotten a little bit back, uh, just waiting for some more downside, hopefully, to, uh, to benefit that trade. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in EEM. So this was our last and final April position. Same thing, zero days to expiration. Went ahead and rolled this one out to June as well. That extends duration on that trade and gives us that, keeps that short delta in our portfolio. So if we take a look at EEM, it's pretty close to where we put it on, sitting right here. And so just waiting for some more downside to benefit that. Next trade and our final trade of the week was a closing trade in Lulu. So we had a resting order sitting in and we got filled uh, a little bit. A lot of our alerts go out in the morning uh, if we can get them filled. But in this case, we, um, we didn't get filled until afternoon, but we got out of this booked around 40% of max profit. And uh, so we're out of Lulu. Remember, we put this Lulu trade on. Uh, well, first of all, right after earnings, it gapped up above its expected move. So we were trying to get filled on a on a short put vertical to kind of ride that wave back up. Never got filled. Uh, but then we got another opportunity to jump in here. And so then price has just kind of been staying higher, kind of coming back lower, grinding higher. And we finally got out today. It hit It hit new highs. And we went ahead and got out and booked a profit of about 40% of max profit. So we are completely out of Lulu. Let's take a look at some of our other positions, starting with oil. Oil has not given us much relief. You can see price is out of range on this piece here. If we look at just the puts, just the untested side, you can see we're getting to a point where if it moves too much higher, we're going to need to roll these puts up. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to give it over the weekend this long Easter weekend, hopefully, uh, hopefully oil, oil prices come down for us. And so that's that piece. And then we've got our other piece here as well, which is kind of the same story. Price has come out of our range. Uh, got about a little bit more premium in these puts, but if it goes much higher, we're going to be rolling these up as well. ES, we've got this long put vertical. It's hovering right around the break even here. Just looking for some downside to benefit that. We've been keeping that on for that short delta exposure. Natty Gas. Uh, Natty Gas has not been doing us any favors either. This is both positions, uh, both of our pieces together. Remember, we have the same put strike at the three strike there. So we just look at these together. Uh, just looking for some upside to benefit our Nat Gas. This thing's been on just a downhill slide the last couple weeks. So if we get a little bit of a bounce higher, that would be greatly appreciated. Natty Gas. Uh, bonds, excuse me, notes. ZN. We've got two pieces on here. We've got this 123 and a half straddle and uh, price is still well within range here. Got a little bit of profit since we've done this roll, but just waiting for some more time to pass on that. And then our other piece, which is a short strangle, has not been adjusted yet. It came through our short strike. Uh, we didn't make an adjustment and it's come back into range. Could use a little bit of up movement in ZN. Some more time to pass there before we do anything. I mentioned wheat, I mentioned DIA, I mentioned EEM, IWM. We've got an iron condor here. Price is just hanging out in the upper end of that range there. Uh, implied volatility, the ivory percentile did pop above 50 today, but price was moving down, so I, did not, uh, I didn't add to this at this point. 
but that is a potential if if implied volatility uh, pops up again. IYR, I mentioned that one. NVIDIA, I mentioned. QQQ, we've got these two sets of short call verticals. This one, price is hanging out right near the break even. And this one, pretty similar, right near the break even. So just looking for some downside to benefit those. SMH, we've got two pieces here. Price has moved out of our range on that one. Uh, kind of similar to oil. You know, we're at a point where we've still got a little bit of premium left in those puts, but if it moves too much higher, we're going to roll those up. And then we've got this piece here, which is a, another similar story, where if we take a look at just the puts, you can see if it moves much higher, we're going to roll those up there as well. SMH, even, even more than the overall broad market, has just been, man, it's been on a tear to the upside. So a little bit of relief to the downside would be nice. SPX, we've got a calendar spread. And let's delete this theoretical one. Uh, you can see price is pretty close to where we put it on. No profit or loss yet. It's just kind of bouncing around in a very narrow range there. SPY, I mentioned that. Uh, WFC, Wells Fargo, we put this on after earnings. So they announced their earnings announcement. And even afterwards, uh, implied volatility stayed pretty high. So we sold some premium in this iron condor. And, uh, and, and, and now you can see implied volatility is really contracted. It was kind of a delayed contraction after, uh, after the earnings announcement. Uh, we need a little bit more up movement to benefit this one. If we can get back to center, we'll, we'll go ahead and book a profit there, especially with this uh, volatility contracting. XLK, we've got this long put vertical, looking for price to move back into range on that one, holding that for that short delta exposure. XLV, I already mentioned this, that's that healthcare ETF. And lastly, XRT, the retail ETF. Price is hanging out up here in the upper end of the range. Could use a little bit of downside, some more time to pass, and we would book a profit on that one. So that's all the trades, that's all the positions. Everybody have a great long weekend. Uh, Friday is a holiday, markets are closed, no alerts. So we'll see you back here on Monday. And of course, we'll be jumping in and out of the community. So feel free to, to drop us a line there as well. Have a good one, everybody. Talk to you next time.